Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to explore how the de Broglie wavelength was defined and how it was basically invented. No, I don't want to say that. Let me try again. Let's explore in this video how the de Broglie wavelength was, 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 I can't think of the word, was derived. That's the word. Okay. Lecture right. online. In this video, we're going to Oh, man, my brain is going haywire. Sorry. Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explore how we derive the equation for the de Broglie wavelength, the wavelength for a small particle. It was assumed that there was a lot of commonality between photons acting like particles and small particles acting like waves. So when we realized that the energy of a photon is equal to h times, and let me write that down, the energy of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency, which can be defined as h c over lambda, since c is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, and we also knew that the momentum of a particle, like a photon, is equal to the energy divided by the speed of light, and again, I should emphasize, we knew that that was the case for a photon, which we saw in the previous couple of videos, there was a connection made between the concept of the momentum of a photon and the momentum of a particle, and then from that, the wavelength of a particle. Well, let's see how that worked. First of all, we know the energy is equal to h times f, so the momentum of a photon can be written as the Planck's constant times the frequency divided by the speed of light, and since f can be written as c over lambda, f can be written as c over lambda, we can then write this as h times c over lambda times c, and the c's cancel out. So the momentum of a photon can be written as the Planck's constant divided by the wavelength of that photon, which means that the wavelength of the photon can be written as Planck's constant divided by the momentum. Here's where they took a leap of faith. We know that the equation for momentum of a particle is equal to the mass times the velocity. You can't say that for a photon because a photon doesn't have mass. But we do know that a particle has mass, so they say, well, if we replace p by m times v, does that mean that the wavelength can then be the wavelength of that particle? And so that's what they assumed. They said, if we take the Planck's constant divided by m times v, this may be the equation that defines the momentum of a particle and therefore the wavelength of that particle. All right, let's see if the units work out. So the units for this, that would be h, which is joules times seconds. Those are the units for Planck's constant, divided by the mass, which is kilograms, and divided by the velocity, which is meters per second. And let's see if we clean this up a little bit. So we have in the numerator, joules times seconds squared, divided by kilograms times meters. Now, that doesn't appear to be, on first side, the units of meters, which is what we expect for wavelength. But let's clean it up a little bit more. We know, we know that joules is a, um, is a newton meter. And we have second squared in the numerator divided by kilogram meter in the denominator. And so meters cancel out. Now we can convert newtons to, well, what newtons is equal to. So this is equal to kilograms, meters, per second square instead of newtons. We still have a second square in the numerator and we have a kilogram in the denominator. Now notice that the kilograms cancel out and second square cancel out and sure enough the only thing we have left is units for meter. So the equation does appear to be correct as far as units is concerned. It does give us the units for wavelength. And it turns out that through experimentation, we discovered that this indeed doesn't explain that small particles like electrons do have wavelengths and act like waves. And therefore, we have to have an associated equation that describes the wavelength of small particles. And that's it.